All right, then now for number 12, we have that a company's profit per year was found to be changing at a rate of blah. Where P, okay, P is company's profit in thousands of dollars, and T is time. Which time? Time since the company was found. Okay, all of this units, years. Part A determined whether the profit, okay, profit, is increasing or decreasing when T equals 2. Okay, cool. Let's figure it out. So, first things first, when you have DP over DT, or you might encounter stuff like, I don't know, derivative of F, derivative of X, might be written with that fancy symbol. This is all rate of change. Okay, the moment you go from F of X to the derivative of f of x, or also, which is a synonym, in it, synonym, this down here, okay? This is all now rate of change, okay? And so when you plug in, say, x equals 5, in this scenario, you're saying, what is my rate of change at x equals 5? Ah, okay. So now that we understand that idea, if over here it asks, yo, is the profit increasing or decreasing when t equals 2? So when the company is 2 years old, is it increasing or decreasing? Have it got it figured it? Did they figure it out already or not? You got to take this dp over dt and plug in t equals 2. Okay? So plug in t equals 2. So 3 parentheses 2 squared minus 8 parentheses 2. You end up with 3 times 4 because of 2 squared minus 16 because of 8 times 2. This is 12 minus 16, which gives you negative 4. Okay, so what is my rate of change when t equals 2? My rate of change when t equals 2 is negative 4. Is that positive or negative? It's negative. So you can say that p is decreasing. And what is your argument? There's a couple ways you can put it. The one that I like the most is just saying p is decreasing because negative 4 is less than 0, see? Or you can say because dp over dt equals negative 4, yeah? This is probably uh, your safer bet, all right? But point is, it's a negative, so then it has to be decreasing, period. That is for part A. Then it tell us that one year after the company was founded, the profit was $4,000. God dang, bruh. Part B. Find an expression for pt when t is greater than or equal to 0. So, notice, here we have the derivative of p in respects to t. Okay, if you want to go back to just pt, you have to do the integral. Okay, what do I mean by this? If I have pt, I wanna, and I want to go to dp over dt, I have to do da -da -da, the derivative. If I want to go back from dp over dt up here, I need to do the integral. All right, cool. So once I do the integral, I can get back up there, and I'm good to go. See? All right, interesting. So the integral is, as you can see, the opposite of the derivative. Okay, they are inverse operations. All right? So however you do the derivative here, you do it backwards to find the integral and so here I only have exponents see right here so that means I just need to do basically the derivative of an exponent but backwards all right so I know that's a little bit weird but hang on with me all right now I'm gonna give you an example first okay if I have x squared and I ask you to do the derivative of this you will take that 2 pop it in front, multiplying, and do minus 1. What do you end up with? You end up with 2x to the power of 1, which is just 2x. And now, if I ask you to go backwards from here, okay, if I ask you to go backwards from here, because this 2 is down in front, you immediately know that you have x squared, okay? And that's sort of like a big hint, okay, for how to do the integral. See? 
All right, then now for part B, they tell us that one year after the company was founded, the profit was $4,000. So damn. We need to find an expression for PT when T is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, we need to do the opposite of a derivative. See? So um, what I have right now is 3t squared minus 8t. And so I need to do the integral of this. See, I need to think backwards, basically. All right? So if I think initially about how these numbers were when they got derivatived, okay? Um, for example, here, see? Because there is a surviving t to the power of 1, that means this used to be to the power of 2, okay? I know that for a fact. So there has to be a t to the power of 2. If here there's a t squared, that means there used to be a t to the power of 3, okay? That is the first thing I'm going to start off by doing, all right? And now I can kind of think about the multiplying and dividing that happens when I pull this 2 in front, see? So if I pull this in front and end it up with a 3, then that means that up here there was just a 1. Why? Because I would be doing 3 times 1. Alright, so here, the one on the left is Gucci. The one on the right is a little bit different. So I need to think that once I did the derivative, okay, and pulled it down in front, I ended up with 8t. See? So I had 2 times something gave me 8. 2 times something gives me 8. That something has to be 4. And so over here, I'm just going to go ahead and put 4. And so this would be the sort of PT I'm going for. See? PT equals this. Now, notice, in my approach I said, okay, this guy survived, ¿cierto? It survived after the derivative because there's a T squared. That means it used to be a T cubed, at least. This guy also survived, so it had to be a T squared, at least. Okay, what about T to the power of 1? Or something without T? What happens there? So anything to the power of 1, okay, would have been like a constant, see? But anything without t, I'm not really accounting it for, see? So that is a constant that would simply disappear. What do I mean by this? If you have f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 3, and you do the derivative of this, okay, you end up with 2x plus 2, and this 3 disappears, ¿cierto? It straight up disappears. Consider doing the integral from here, see? If you do the integral from here, you would say, all right, so because I have x to the power of 1, that means there used to be an x squared. If I have a 2 that survived, that means there has to be an x to the power of 1, ¿cierto? And you would end up concluding that it's 2x squared plus 2x. But you would be leaving aside this plus 3. And so what you do when you do an integral, always, always, do not forget, is that you put plus c. Because this is symbolizes any 3 that you might be missing, any constant that you might be missing. So right now, my current scenario is this right here that I'm putting in purple. P of t equals t cubed minus 4t squared plus c. And so until I find the value of c, um, I'm not done yet. See? All right. So right now, I have three sort of variables going on. I have p of t, I have t, and I have c. Okay, those are my three variables, all right? So, what is P of T? P of T is profit. What is T? T is time. What is C? C is constant. All right, so can I plug two of these right away and find my constant? Yes, you can, which is actually something kind of cool about these integral problems. They do follow a pattern, okay? You usually have to find that last constant, and they give you the information for it. So, one year after the company was founded, the profit was $4,000. Notice what I highlighted. One year, year is time, t equals 1. Profit, 4,000, p equals 4. What is my set of points? 1, 4. Interesting. So, I go ahead and plug in 1, 4 down here. Whoops. If I take this 1, 4 and plug it in down here, this guy in purple, I end up with 4 equals 1 cubed 
minus 4 times 1 squared plus c. So 4 equals 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, minus 4 times 1 plus c. That tells me that we have 4 equals c minus 3, which means that c equals 7. So now that I found that c equals 7, I plug it in back to my thing in purple. And my last, last thing that I'm going to do is that p of t equals t cubed minus 4t squared plus c, we said that c was 7, this is for part b, and that is for number 12. I think the hardest part is really, really understanding that the integral is the opposite of derivative, and once you practice a few of those, you really understand that it's not that hard. My biggest tip that I can give is really focus on the exponents, okay? Work around the exponents, think about what has to happen before and after they get derivative. That is for number 12.